Santa Ana apparently taking police for quite a joyride. They have been chasing him for the better part of about 30 minutes. Santa Ana eventually handing it off to CHP. Chased him all the way up the 5 freeway, over to the 57 freeway, into Diamond Bar, onto the 60 freeway. He's made his way all the way out here to Ontario, where he got onto the 15 freeway and is now transitioning onto the 10 freeway, going in the opposite direction. So after several miles going east, we're now going back the westbound direction back towards L.A. County now. We are in uh, Riverside, San Bernardino County, ra uh, rather, at the moment as we make our way closer to L.A. County. You can see he's pushing 90 miles per hour. He's been doing excessive speeds during this entire chase, hovering anywhere between 70 and 90 miles per hour. Right now, doing about 80 miles per hour, apparently armed with a weapon, and there are several other people inside that van. So police, not exactly sure what they're dealing with in there, but at least several people inside that heavily tinted van. A van stolen out of Orange County in the Santa Ana area. CHP has taken over this pursuit and is now uh, firmly in position behind him with dozens of units uh, monitoring uh, from various stations, and I can tell you there are at least one, two, three, four, five, six units right behind him here as we make our way westbound on the 10 freeway, uh, coming up again uh, past Ontario Airport here is where we are. All right, and what are the what are the road conditions right now? I think the storm has are pretty much gone through, right? So the road, I would guess, is is essentially dry at this point. Yeah, the road is essentially dry and traffic is fairly light. He has not encountered much traffic during this entire pursuit, has been able to uh, navigate relatively easily at pretty quick speeds here uh, without encountering any kind of a traffic jam. And as you mentioned, yeah, the storm is pretty much out of here and the roads are pretty dry for the time being. You can see CHP still right behind him here. Uh, again, we do believe that he is armed with a weapon. There is a suspicion that these may possibly be gang members, but that is unconfirmed, but they are treating this as a armed and dangerous crowd inside that white van that you see there, several units right behind them. Haven't been able to form a comfortable traffic break just yet, but if they get an opportunity, they'll certainly try and do that. So Chris, they, they, they believe there is more than one person in this van, more than just the driver. They believe that it, it could be a crew of people. Yeah, it could be two or three, okay. at least. And this is uh, the second uh, dangerous pursuit that we've seen tonight. Chris, you were over the other one in uh, the Santa Clarita area. That one fortunately ended without anyone being hurt, uh, with uh, the spike strip being deployed and eventually the tires uh, going out on a, on a Mustang during the 6 o'clock hour. And, uh, and now we are seeing another one here uh, during the 11 o'clock hour, this white van uh, refusing to pull over. And as Chris indicated, it may be stolen out of Santa Ana. That is where this pursuit originated with Santa Ana PD. And then they turned it over to the CHP when it got on the freeways. And uh, how fast are we going now, Chris? So we're doing about 80 miles per hour, 70 to 80, actually close to about 70 miles per hour right now. And you can see he's continuing to weave through here, I could tell you it's going to be interesting if and when he does get off the freeway. You know, that pursuit earlier today was kind of all over the place on surface streets, uh, relatively rural areas, and that guy generally just kind of gave himself up at a certain point, whether he gave himself up because he was running out of gas or what the story was. This is a top-heavy vehicle. We don't know what this driver is willing to do. If he takes it off of the freeway and puts this on surface streets, uh, how that vehicle will behave is anybody's guess, depending on how he's driving and what his mental state is. We don't know exactly what his driving capabilities are for the time being he's been relatively controlled doing pretty quick speeds at times speeding over 90 miles per hour right now doing just over the speed limit at about 70 75 miles per hour and uh, again seems to be in control of the vehicle uh, on on the freeway if he gets off of the freeway and is desperate to get away and encounter some traffic we'll see what he does in the meantime I can tell you almost the entire duration of this pursuit has been on the freeway, and that is exactly what law enforcement would rather be dealing with. CHP, obviously well-trained for this. We do this all the time, and so CHP is uh, very comfortable to take this as long as this driver is willing to take it on the freeway. They really want to keep it on the freeway, especially this time of the night where you're not dealing with a lot of traffic. If they have to use any kind of force or any maneuvers, they have lots of room to do it without too much traffic to get in the way and not a lot of innocent motorists to put in danger. All right, and you mentioned, <clears throat> worth pointing out, it is a top-heavy vehicle. I, I wonder, if, Michelle, if that might affect mm. whether they would spikes or not spikes rip it, but use the pit maneuver on it.
because if it's top heavy, it might roll over if they try to spin it. Or, or whether, the, you know, does that take that out of their bag of tricks? They don't want to cause an accident. They just want this thing to stop. Yeah, uh, pet maneuver at these speeds, very, very, very unlikely. Again, we, we, we hate to say, say never, you know, never say never in this business, but for the most part, we generally will see that more, you know, under 50 miles per hour, preferably under 40 miles per hour to attempt uh, a, a pit maneuver. But a pit maneuver on the freeway at excessive speeds, really unlikely. They'd much rather just wait and let him run out of gas or, you know, make him make another kind of a move. Now, if he poses a threat to other motorists, then everything is in, uh, in play. But uh, even spike strips, a spike attempt, if they could predict where he's going, if they could set up units ahead of him, which obviously is very difficult to do when you have a, a, a five-lane freeway like this, it's difficult to do, but it's possible. It's possible to uh, to successfully spike a vehicle at about 70 miles per hour, which is about what he's doing right now. At this point, though, it's a joyride on the freeway. He's getting back into L.A. County now, and so we'll see if uh, L.A. County Sheriff uh, comes overhead. I know we have Orange County, uh, an Orange County helicopter, as well as CHP's helicopter, I believe, uh, and maybe even an additional helicopter. I think there were a total of three law enforcement helicopters. Yes, three helicopters right now overhead. That's why you can see all of those night suns uh, firmly squared in this man's direction, and you can see he is not showing any signs of slowing down here. So several agencies involved on the ground and from above, and so we'll see as we make our way into L.A. County. L.A. County surely monitoring, monitoring this pursuit as well. All right, and we're going to continue to do that. We're In about 30 seconds, we're going to go off the air here on ABC 7. The Jimmy Kimmel Show will come on, but we will still be live on Facebook, Facebook uh, and on ABC7.com. So please join us there. Make the transition now. We're going to continue our live team coverage of this police pursuit now making its way to L.A. County. And we are still live. Mark Brown, Michelle Tuzzi right here on ABC7. Uh, and now on Facebook Live covering this pursuit. Uh, Chris Christie, what can you tell us about the location and uh, where he's heading right now? Yeah, so we're now in Montclair, and he's just past, uh, I want to say, uh, yeah, Monta Vista Avenue. Uh, no signs of slowing down. In fact, he's actually sped up here in the last couple of seconds, so doing over 80 miles per hour and uh, firmly in L.A. County's jurisdiction, although as long as he's on the freeway, CHP has the authority here. They're the primary agency uh, handling this chase. There are units from Orange County monitoring as well, but Santa Ana did eventually give up the pursuit to CHP, but they'll be making their way to the pursuit termination once this does come to an end, because apparently this is a stolen van out of the Santa Ana area, and apparently these guys are armed and dangerous and wanted for other crimes possibly. So lots of agencies involved, very little chance of him getting away based on all of those details that I just gave you there. But you can see the number of units right behind him. Those are predominantly CHP units, and again, I counted uh, about a half a dozen right behind them. They're kind of switching off as they call out the pursuit on the radio, and again, they have the assistance of three additional helicopters overhead here. So a true L.A. moment, a white van, top-heavy for sure. We don't know how many people are inside that van, but again, my biggest worry is if he takes it off the freeway, what that means for folks in the surrounding communities if he decides to, uh, you know, make a desperate attempt to get away here. Again, for the most part, this has been a tame pursuit by all accounts. Some excessive speeds on the freeway, but again, mostly freeway speeds and not a lot of traffic to deal with. So they will take that all day long in these conditions. Absolutely. And, and even if it continues just the way it is, he's eventually going to run out of gas, which uh, is, a, is a boon for everybody involved, really. Uh, you point out, you know, obviously the, the time frame right now, there's not going to be a lot of traffic. There wouldn't be a lot of foot traffic. If he gets off the freeway, it won't, wouldn't be as dangerous as if it was at 5 o'clock in the afternoon getting off the freeway. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and so, yeah, at this time of night, in this area at least, it should be fairly quiet, fairly empty. That is yeah, all good news for the pursuing officers. The likelihood of an accident goes down. The likelihood of cross traffic goes down if he gets off the freeway. Uh, right now, though, staying on, this is the westbound 10 freeway. In uh, heading into, he's in L.A. County now. He's in Pomona, as you're pointing out. A lot of trucks on the roadway as well. I'm noticing, uh, but yep. they're giving him a wide berth, right? 
Yeah, and, and as we make our way westbound on the 10 freeway, we've kind of been in this area before. He actually earlier made his way up the 57 freeway and in Diamond Bar got onto the 60 freeway and then went through Pomona all the way out to Ontario, decided to get onto the 15 and get onto the 10 freeway and making his way back to where we came from. So as he comes up on the 57 freeway, the million dollar question right now is whether he decides to jump back onto a southbound freeway and get back into Orange County. If he is from that area, if he is more familiar with Orange County, maybe they'll try and take it back in that direction as we so often see. But right now, uh, we'll see what decision he makes as he comes up on the 5771 interchange here in uh, Pomona. So again, westbound side of the 10 freeway with the decision point coming up and knowing that he's been on the 57 came from the northbound 57 I would not be surprised if he attempts to go back southbound the 57 would be his best opportunity to do so if he does not do that well that'll put him uh, over in the San Gabriel Valley and then we'll see how how close to LA he he gets again he could take the 10 freeway all the way to the 210 or the 605 uh, or uh, wherever he intends to take it mm -hmm. don't know where these guys are from but that's information CHP may have at their disposal so they may be planning for that eventuality as well yeah you know the more predictable he gets yeah the more the easier it gets for the CHP the more likely they can find a place where they might be able to create a choke point and do the spike strip or do something that uh, might bring this pursuit to an end in a more precipitous way but uh, again even without those elements just the predictability of it kind of lowers the tension for everybody involved it's still a tense situation but at least if it's not unpredictable if he's not jumping off the freeway going 100 miles an hour uh, that that helps everybody out who's involved in this um, and Sure enough, sure enough, take a look, getting off of the 10 freeway, uh, as I kind of predicted there, I had a funny feeling he may do that. So now it looks like he's going to be transitioning back on to the southbound 57. We'll wait for confirmation of that, but it does look like he's going to be heading southbound on the 57 freeway, mm -hmm. and sure enough, that will take him down into uh, Orange County if he sticks with it. Obviously, uh, he won't cross the county line until he gets to Yorba Linda, but uh, that does appear to be the direction he's heading. That's where he came from, and so he's going back home. But it does look like he's going back where he came from, at least as far as we could tell. Obviously, anything's possible at this point. There are several individuals inside that van, so what their ultimate intention is, is anyone's guess, but ultimately, it could very well be a joyride. This was a report of a stolen vehicle. They are armed, so that's going to play into the decision-making of law enforcement as well. They're going to treat these uh, Grand Theft Auto suspects as gingerly as possible when this does come, when this does finally come to a stop. And you, you automatically start to think of the, you know, the eventuality of this pursuit coming to a stop. Hopefully it comes to a peaceful stop, but when it comes time to extract the drivers from this van, think about what they're dealing with. They don't have a clear number of people that they, they don't have a clear number of how many people are inside the van. Obviously a van like this could hold upwards of a half a dozen people, more than that obviously, uh, in a van this size. So they're going to be very careful as they eventually extract the drivers from this vehicle, hopefully if it gives itself up and then ultimately the process of clearing the vehicle will take a little bit of time because they're going to be very, very careful with the information that we've been given. So with that information in mind, we'll hope that it comes to a peaceful end, but uh, anything's possible as we, as we know so, so well, guys. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Well, anything is possible, but uh, the probability, <laughs> we know that there are certain probabilities involved here. One is the likelihood of escape. It's very minimal. Uh, the other is that... Uh, He's not going to outrun a radio, and he certainly can't outmaneuver his pursuing uh, the pursuing vehicles. Um, so there are only certain uh, outcomes that are likely, uh, and those are all pretty much determined by the suspect. You know, any police officer will tell you that uh, the, the suspect is kind of uh, in the driver's seat, so to speak. Uh, it's his or her actions that determine the response by pursuing officers primarily. When they stop, when they slow down, uh, it makes it less likely that violence will occur uh, when they drive erratically, when they, for example, drive, uh, you know, if they end up trying to ram uh, their pursuers or something like that, the likelihood of gunfire goes way up. Uh, it really depends on how they act. That determines how law enforcement responds. And uh, if they're well-trained, 
they're going to do it in a way that nobody gets hurt. And uh, the, the, the objective here is for everyone to go home at the end of the day, all of the, all of the officers to go home and for the suspect to go where he or she belongs, which is, of course, jail. Interestingly enough, he seems to be all over the road at this point. At one point, it looked like he was really committed to the 57 as he was all the way in the left. Now he's made his way all the way over to the right. He made his way back to the left while you were speaking there for a minute, Mark, and now all the way back over to the right once again. So he's all over the paint, not like he's weaving through a lot of traffic here. You can see there's only a couple other cars that he's sharing the road with. But he does uh, appear to be thinking about his next move, contemplating on when might be the right opportunity to jump off and exit one of these uh, exits here off of the 57 freeway. You can see CHP closing in a little bit closer than they were earlier. Um, the other eventuality, if this does come to an end off the freeway, as you mentioned, Mark, is a foot bail. You know, if he decides to bail, you have several suspects who are going to run in all different directions, they seem to be prepared for that as well, because as we mentioned, we have already got at least a half a dozen CHP patrolmen already involved in the pursuit. Once he gets off the freeway, they will have additional agencies to, to assist with that, but that's another possibility as well. We hope that uh, that doesn't happen either, but we're continuing southbound on the 57 freeway, and it does appear that we are getting ever so closer to the Orange County line. So it, he's had a couple of opportunities to get off the 57, appears to be committed to the southbound side of the 57 freeway. Okay, and I'm noticing just so many trucks out there right now. Um, a lot of uh, truck traffic on all the freeways that he has been on. Uh, that's just an interesting thing to notice. Um, and, and luckily he's not doing a lot of weaving. But uh, that would, you know, when, you, when you've got big trucks there, that increases the level of, of, of danger here, too, because they certainly can't maneuver. He's got to maneuver around them. So far, though, not really causing any problems. And as you can see, a near-empty freeway as he's getting on. Uh, he's on the 57 freeway. Uh, Still on the 57, yep. Approaching Pathfinder Road. He's in the Diamond Bar area, so he's still in L.A. County, but not for much longer if he continues. Yeah, and it looks like he's really, I mean, he, aside from those trucks, which we have seen quite a few of those uh, big tractor trailers uh, carrying lots of cargo on the freeway this evening, but other than that, you could see he's really got lots of room to play with, and he seems to be playing with it right now, hovering the middle lanes, but he's been all over the place here in the last couple of minutes, I think contemplating on where he wants to get off. So I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if he sees an opportunity, he may in fact uh, get off, or maybe he's looking for another freeway if he's looking for a freeway his next opportunity is going to be the 90 um, again that would uh, that would be the the next option for him or he could take it further south again we don't know where this uh, where they're from we just understand that the uh, the van itself was stolen from the Santa Ana area so he's got his blinkers on that's interesting. I, as far as I can tell, pretty heavily tinted windows. Either way, it's very difficult to tell uh, what's going on inside the driver's seat at night, obviously. But you can see the night sun overhead. That's going to be compliments of Duke One, Angel One waiting further south. That's Anaheim PD's helicopter. They're ready for this as well as it makes its way closer to the Anaheim area. Um, and uh, CHP also in position overhead as well. So again, lots of air support here for this particular support and uh, a number of units right behind him. So we're continuing at a pretty consistent clip. I think it's worth noting that he's really not doing excessive speeds. I mean, it, this is kind of, I mean, I, I guess you'd call it a high speed pursuit. He's not traveling very slowly, but he's doing just over the speed limit. And he seems to be, uh, he seems to have full control of the vehicle. You know, whether alcohol is a, is a factor here or any other substance that he might be under the influence, we, we don't know. But he doesn't seem to be uh, losing control of the vehicle at all. He seems to be in control, just kind of, again, taking police for a joyride. Wow. Well, it sure looks like that. And. I guess it's to, to the good fortune of everybody involved so far that he's not doing a lot of those sort of erratic moves. That signal, you're right, has been, has been going, that blinker, that uh, signaling a right turn for a long time. He must not know it's uh, going on. Um, but yes, uh, 70, in the, in the mid-70s uh, miles an hour range, that's certainly manageable for a vehicle like this. You don't want to get going too much faster than that because, as you mentioned, it's top heavy. You make a sudden move in that thing, it's going to tip over, it's going to roll. But uh, as long as you're going in a straight line, not making a lot of crazy moves, um, 
this is uh, going to be pretty much accident free. One hopes that uh, at some point he either decides to give up or he'll just run out of gas and uh, give up to uh, his pursuers because they're not going to let him get away. Again, no, we, we're, we're hearing the possibility that there is a weapon in the van, that one of the people that's in this van may have a gun. Um, that's what police are either assuming or has been, or has been seen, actually. That's why they're going to definitely stay with this. They're going to be very careful about, about this in terms of a foot bail. If they do take off uh, in some area, they want to make sure to get them before they can come to go, uh, go to ground and maybe seek shelter or, or uh, break into someone's home if uh, that is in their plan. Uh, it's hard to tell what their plans are, frankly, given the fact that it's just kind of a big circle that they're going in, a big loop uh, through uh, uh, Orange and San Bernardino and Los Angeles counties on these outlying freeways that are pretty much clear of traffic. He's going in the mid-70 miles an hour and just kind of uh, just going. Not really. Yeah. It doesn't look like he's trying to get away. I mean, there's not really an effort here to try to get away. He's just driving. Yeah, no, the only thing that I notice is that as the CHP uh, primary unit right behind him closes in, uh, he occasionally will speed up. So I've seen see that primary unit there kind of back off a little bit. They get a little bit closer, and as he does so, sure enough, that's when he decides to step on the gas a little bit again. I think we've only seen him since we've been overhead here in the last, uh, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes, uh, never really going much over 85 at the most. Um, but that's only when he's... Uh, the, feels like he's being threatened from behind there. So a fascinating shot now as we make our way closer to Brea, that uh, helicopter overhead, uh, it's uh, just off to, the, uh, off to the right there, shining the light down below, excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, as, you, yeah, as you mentioned, he's doing very manageable speeds and uh, yeah, not really, uh, not really flooring it, not really under the impression that he's gonna get away. It's almost like he knows how this is gonna end Maybe he has an idea of where he wants to take it, but he knows that uh, it's a kind of a uh, the, the clock is ticking for him. I mean, there's just when you look at it from this angle. Of course, we have the luxury of looking at it from this angle. Um, mm -hmm. It's obviously a lot different when you're in the driver's seat with, uh, you know, when you're making real-time decisions and you, all you see is the, uh, the 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 blue and red lights in the rearview mirror. But uh, in a situation like this, we can see from above that there is just so little, such a little, such a small probability, I should say, of uh, of this guy getting away. When you consider all of the resources um, that are involved here, and as I say that, uh, CHP is now handing it off um, from their Rancho Cucamonga office over to, I believe, the uh, Santa Ana station, taking over the pursuit now. So they're going to do a crew swap down on the freeway. That will give the officers uh, a break that have been pursuing him for the last few minutes, and a new set of dep a new set of uh, CHP officers will uh, take over the pursuit. Uh, they are fresh; they're going to have some fresh eyes on it. That's something that uh, is done very, very intentionally. Obviously, the longer that unit behind him is pursuing that suspect's vehicle, well, the higher the adrenaline gets, and at a certain point, the safest thing to do is to swap out that primary unit, and that's exactly what they've done. So now we're back into Santa Ana's jurisdiction. This is CHP's Santa Ana office that'll take over the pursuit. CHP's helicopter overhead, as well as Anaheim PD, uh, ready to uh, follow him as well in the event <laughs> that he gets off the freeway. At the time, for the time being, though, he seems pretty committed to the 57 freeway. Um, I mean, he's really just hovering those middle lanes, Mark. That helicopter that has been periodically in and out of the shot, uh, what agency is that? Uh, I hesitate to say because there are three law enforcement helicopters, and uh, obviously, as you can imagine, at night, it's hard to know which one is which. Mm. Um, so we do have three altogether. Um, at least that's, uh, that's what I, I understand. Yeah, now we have, we have two left. I think one of them pulled off. So we now have Anaheim PD as well as the Orange County Sheriff's Office. So CHP, I think, has pulled their helicopter off. But Orange County authorities now following overhead and CHP with a number of units right behind them. All right. They're on the 57 freeway now. Uh, and... Uh in Placentia, or now crossing into Fullerton, actually, as we see that. And I know that because of our SkyMap 7 technology that is on board Air 7 HD. So 
Uh, we are very lucky and glad to have Chris Christie with us. But without you, Chris, we'd be able to at least know what, the, what, what road he's on and what, what's ahead of him and what's uh, kind of behind him and what direction and speed of travel. So that is really a helpful tool as we cover pursuits and things uh, that involve movement and uh, location, um, such as brush fires. We know it's been very uh, helpful on, on that as well. Um, the traffic, he's just passing a CHP unit now. The traffic ahead of him, I'm guessing, is probably very minimal, would you say? Very minimal uh, at, at, at best, and you can see additional units now getting onto the freeway. So again, these are the fresh uh, crew of CHP officers from the Santa Ana Division now getting onto the freeway here. Again, as you mentioned, Mark, sure enough, very, very, very light traffic as he makes his way closer to the 91 freeway. I believe he's already bypassed that exit, but that was the that was going to be his next chance to get off the 57 freeway would have been the 91, and I believe, well, this is the interchange here, and yeah, sure enough, he's now under the 91 transition and committed to the 57 as he makes his way southbound uh, closer to, um, yeah, as we make our way through Placentia here. Okay, passing through Old Town Placentia. Into Anaheim now. Now he's in Anaheim. And speeds, can't see the speed icon, uh, but what would you, oh, there it is, 71 yeah, miles Yeah, we're back hour, so. back up to about 70, so he's been pretty consistent with the speeds as well. Um, but you see that, uh, that new primary unit keeping a little bit more distance between him and that van. You can see uh, nobody really in front of him, and it does look like they've kind of been successful in forming that traffic break from behind him. They, I don't think they're going to let anybody else, if they can help it, not let anybody else get uh, catch up to him from behind. So in the event they have to use force, there may be a few cars in front of him and some other trucks in front of him that are entering the freeway, but traffic from behind is now being held at bay as CHP forms their traffic break about a football field or two behind him. Again, we're <laughs> south now of the 91 freeway, continuing southbound on the 57 freeway. The next interchange is going to be the Orange Crush. And uh, well, I check that. Uh, yeah, I'll be coming up on uh, on the on the 22 here in a little bit. But uh, he's got a little more time before he get down there as he approaches the city of Orange. But right now, still fairly committed to those center lanes. Has not really deviated from that for the last five or six minutes. Just kind of staying staying the course here at about 75, 70, 75, up to 85, 80 miles per hour at one point, um, but uh, pretty consistent speeds overall, and CHP just kind of tagging along with him, waiting to see how much fuel is in the tank of this white, uh, this white van, this white work van, it looks like. Yeah, and again, there are at least, we're, we're hearing at least one person, perhaps several more people in the van, and uh, we don't know if one or more of them might, in fact, be armed, uh, and so that is the big concern here that um, you know, they're, they're, they, whoever's in there does present a danger to the public. It's not just a stolen vehicle. There might be an armed person in there. And uh, that, that adds to the level of tension here. But what's good about it so far, he's pretty much going in a straight line, staying on the freeway, not being erratic in his driving, not going super fast. Um, one hopes that uh, all he's interested in doing is just staying free at this point and not actually trying to get away. It doesn't look like he's trying to get away, really and uh, that he will eventually just give up or the vehicle will run out of gas. You got the CHP now and, and what you pointed out, you know, as they change their, they switch out the pursuers, what you do then is you've got fresh eyes, um, you, you know, for lack of a better term, fresh legs involved in this, maybe a full tank of gas in the, uh, in the pursuing vehicle. And uh, that gives them, you know, whoever's on there is not worn out, is not, has not been adrenalized for, for the better part of half an hour or more. And that means they're fresh mentally as well as physically, whereas the driver is just by themselves. You know, he's, he's doing it all on his own. And whatever mental wear and tear he's undergoing as a result of this ordeal is going to take its toll on him, whereas the person directly behind him is going to be a little fresher. So that gives, that's another advantage law enforcement has. They've got virtually unlimited, really, resources in terms of uh, dealing with this person and pursuing him, whereas uh, the person who's doing it, uh, the, the suspect, is pretty much on his own. 
Yeah, you're so right about that. You know, it's almost, a, I hate to call it a game, but it's almost a game of endurance. Um, you know, and as you mentioned, law enforcement has unlimited resources. That driver's endurance is rapidly decreasing over the course of the pursuit. Now, they, have, they, they never really last more than several hours at most because uh, fuel is a limited uh, commodity down there in that fuel tank. But in this case, we have no idea how much fuel is left on board, and so he is going to take this. Uh, it looks like we're actually transitioning now. Uh, am I right about that, Rob? Yeah, getting on, getting onto the five. I think we're getting onto the five freeway, which is also where we've been before. So this originally started on the five freeway. This this was the first freeway that he got onto. He took the, the he took the five freeway to the 57 and has basically reversed course. So he took the 5 to the 57 to the 60, all the way out to the Inland Empire, around Ontario, and then basically just turned around in a giant loop on the 10 freeway back to the 57, and now back to the 5 freeway. So he's done a giant circle. This is so common in these situations, and mm -hmm. sure enough, he's proving to follow the trend here, now continuing southbound on the 5 freeway, and uh, law enforcement, by the way, Mark, is operating. I don't know how they know, but they feel pretty comfortable with the fact that uh, they believe he is armed with a handgun. Mm -hmm. So there, there is believed to be a handgun, at least one handgun, on board this van. Whether there's any other weapons, certainly that's a possibility. But when you have more than one suspect inside the van, which they do believe they're dealing with multiple suspects, um, ultimately this will be a dangerous situation. No matter what the outcome is, it's going to be uh, it's going to be uh, nerve wracking for everybody involved. No, no matter how it ends, because there's just so many factors. A vehicle of that size, with numerous suspects believed to be armed and dangerous. Uh, possibly gang members, definitely grand theft auto suspects, as this is believed to be uh, a stolen van. Um, this is going to be uh, a nerve-wracking ending no matter what. But in the meantime, it looks like we okay, it looks like he just it. lost a tire mm -hmm. or a rim. It was either, it looks like a rim. It looks like he lost, a, or maybe a hubcap. Was it tire? Uh, I yeah, think so, he, he yeah. Lost, there it yeah, is. I, he, yeah, it looks like the left front tire is getting flat. I saw uh, there was a puff of smoke right before the rim came off, before the wheel, uh, the, the, the hubcap came off. Um, I did not. It... So, so something came off. I can't confirm what came off, but it, it's not out of the question. Although, I, uh, okay, something else. Got, that Those are hubcaps. I think those right. are hubcaps that are flying off. Now, why are those hubcaps flying off? I don't know, but it's possible oh, that there was a that. spike attempt. He just yeah. he's opening his door. Okay, and that the driver's side door is opening he's at about, up. what are we at, 70 miles per hour here, Rob? Yeah, so we're, we're doing about 50 miles per hour on the freeway, and we've seen the door now pop open as these hubcaps are flying off the wheel. Now, I did not see a spike attempt. But that is a possibility. It's possible that as we were dra traveling through that dark corridor on the 57 freeway, they may have had a spike strip laid out for him, and it was so dark he wouldn't have even seen it. I did not hear that. I cannot confirm that yet. But that's a possibility. So, either way, Mark, something has caused uh, that front wheel to start coming apart. Can, I, I thought I saw a tire, but it does appear that there is a flat tire. But there are hubcaps flying off that vehicle, and for some reason... He decided to pop open the driver's side door, which is really, really weird. Um, I have not seen that. Not at these speeds. I mean, it's not like he's going to jump out at 50 miles per hour. But what he's thinking there, what the motivation is to open the door uh, in the middle of the freeway like this, I mean, just when you thought he was behaving somewhat rationally, at least as far as freeway driving is concerned, um, who knows what's going through his mind at this point. As we mentioned, his endurance level uh, is, in que is, 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 is a question mark at this point. You know, wh how desperate is he to get away? What does he have in mind? Oh. does look like he's riding he's the rim. He's on the rim so he right lost, now. Lost that front tire, lost the hubcap, and, uh, and I saw other pieces of metal flying off as well. And that was at least from that driver's side. As we come around here, We'll try and get a glimpse to see. Uh, this will be evidence of a possible spike attempt way back when we weren't able to see uh, if they tried it. But if that front right wheel is coming off as well, or the tire at least is being shredded, that'll that'll indicate that there was a spike attempt. But at the very least, you see that front driver's side uh, wheel on the rim. He's driving on the rim, and sure enough, he's slowing down uh, considerably, although... 
while he is slowing down, he's still traveling at a pretty uh, good clip. That that van is, I think, behaving remarkably well, considering it's missing uh, it's it's missing a front tire. Um, I mean, it, you almost wouldn't even. You almost couldn't even tell just on the base of the just based on the stability of the uh, of of the van the way we see it here. Um, I mean, he's driving in a almost a perfectly straight line, staying in that center lane there, and uh, you know now we're making our way into Newport. So we'll see what he decides to do here. This is going to be very interesting, but I have to wonder what was going through his head when he decided to pop open that driver's side door. Yeah, maybe he was checking to see uh, the the health of his rear tires. Uh, the left front is definitely gone, as you're seeing here. Uh, I'm seeing reports on Twitter uh, from, uh, let's see, I want to give credit where credit is due here. Who's actually putting this out? But one of, the, one of these folks is saying that a spike strip actually was deployed on the transition road uh, and that that's why oh, that that's... tire went flat. Uh, we didn't see it. Very interesting. Yeah, um, but apparently that did, uh, that did happen. OC Scanner. I want to give the proper credit there and, and uh, give the attribution to OC Scanner, who's apparently uh, got an ear to the scanners that apparently spike strips were delivered, spikes were delivered on the interchange, according to OC Scanner. So I'm uh, quoting you and putting a like on you, too, there, so for that information. He's now waving. Look at that. He's waving out the window. Um, He's waving. So it's all of a sudden getting a little stranger here and a little more dangerous. Yeah, lighting, lighting up. He's, he's, he's smoking something. You can see he's lit up, lit up something. We hesitate to say whether it's a cigarette or another substance, but he is smoking something now. Waving his hand out the window, obviously having some fun now and enjoying the attention. Now it's no secret that he's been getting all the attention. He knows that uh, he's got helicopters overhead, and he knows obviously all of the law enforcement, maybe even consuming some media in that driver's seat. You just never know. Uh, in this day and age, it's very, very possible. Uh, so many app streaming this pursuit right now of course we are on facebook live right now as well as our abc7 app and on abc7.com um and obviously he's uh, got access to the car radio as well so uh obviously it, it appears he's having a little bit of fun uh we it, he may have dropped something earlier but he certainly does have that driver's side window rolled down i don't think that was the case earlier but mark i've got to say that is very interesting and very clever and unique on the part of chp to have that spike strip ready on the transition road and i'll tell you why first of all when you're on that transition you're forced to slow down a bit mm -hmm. you've got to slow down on the transition you can't maintain 75 miles on a transition road and so that's what's an opportunity where you have well, a transition what's, what's he got in his yep. hand here you see uh, it looks like he's just waving it. he's got his palm out kind of waving like waving at one of the hand. okay I can't see that. Mm -hmm. I think he's waving at the officer to his left rear, but I'm, I'm not, not entirely. He's, he better be I really mean, he careful. could be indicating. Go ahead. Yeah, maybe indicating that he's, uh, he's either having fun or maybe indicating he wants to give up. It's certainly a possibility. In any event, he is waving or was waving his hand out the window. That was pretty apparent. Uh, what I was just mentioning, though, was that, you know, those transition roads, you, you're guaranteed to get the suspect down to one lane, so he can't avoid the spike strip on a transition road. And, uh, and by, by a certain amount of luck and a certain amount of skill, they were able to predict that he would – Maybe get off at that transition, and it looks like a successful spike attempt on the freeway, on one of the transition roads from the 57 freeway to the 5. Uh, remarkable, re re remarkable strategy there by mm -hmm. CHP, and that is going to expedite the end of this pursuit because while he seems to be in control at this point, um, how you know at a certain point he's going to lose the steering capabilities uh, when he gets off the freeway or decides to start uh, uh, navigating other traffic. Uh, he seems to be doing okay as he travels in a straight line. As he moves that steering wheel, though, that's where things are going to start coming apart. We're going to start seeing sparks here in the near future as well, I would imagine. Yeah, and, uh, you know, what sometimes happens, <coughs> excuse me, what sometimes happens is you'll, you'll actually, because of the friction with the road, the rim, the, the rim will catch fire or start a fire. It's not happening so far, um, but uh, at the very least, he risks losing control. The slightest maneuver uh, with, you know, steering maneuver at this point could send him out of control. He's in, and he's probably well aware of that, so he's pretty much staying in a straight line. Again, sticking his hand out the window. 
Um, we'll have to see how this ends here because it is going to end, and I would guess it's going to end sooner rather than later. Speed's now down to the mid 40s. Well, the other thing that the other thing that that spike is, is, has done is by by decreasing his speed down to the mid 40s, all of a sudden. And I can't, I, I can't say that they're considering this. We don't know that. Um, and they, they do take other factors into consideration. But it, purely from a situational standpoint, when you look at the speed he's now down to, he's doing about half the speed he was before the spike attempt. And so at, uh, at 50 or below, on the freeway at least, I wouldn't say this is true on surface streets, but at 45, 50 miles per hour on the freeway, a pit maneuver is at least a possibility, at least a possibility if they're dealing with an empty freeway and he slows down. If he slows down any more, now they're well aware that he's missing a tire as well, but uh, if, uh, if they see an opportunity to disable the vehicle, that's an opportunity that they may or may not take. That ultimately comes down to the discretion of the supervisor uh, over at CHP who is now uh, calling out the instructions here. But uh, that's at least something to consider, one possibility, uh, just as a result of that spike attempt. Now, if he was maintaining, you know, 70, 80, 90 miles an hour, that would not be a consideration at all. But at the for the time being, he's hovering again right around 45, 50, and uh, for the most part, traveling in a straight line, despite the fact that he's missing a front left tire. Yeah, uh, still maintaining control over this van. Let's look at the video to the right. You'll see that tire. There it is, where it started, where it just shredded. You saw the uh, the, the the part of the, the hubcap come off, and then a little bit later, you'll see another part of the hubcap come off. And the door will open here in a second, and you'll see uh, he looks. Yeah, there's the other. Uh, the, there's the main part of the hubcap off the uh, the driver's side front tire, and then you'll see that that door open up. Where it looks like he's looking to see what happened, and there goes. It looks like a water bottle. Looks like a clear plastic water bottle that either fell or was thrown okay. out of the uh, out of the vehicle or dropped, and then the door closes and he continued on as his as his tire got flatter and flatter. So now, that's what you're seeing in the video to the right, uh, and the live picture on your left is what we're looking at right now as he is still Getting on over the, the right. Is he moving over to Getting the right? Getting over is he to the to right. Off? This is the first time. This is the first time in a while that he's deviated from those center lanes. Now making his way over to the right did pass an opportunity to get off uh, at that exit. I'm not exactly sure which exit that was. I think it was Sand Canyon. But he is now in Irvine, southbound side of the 5 freeway, and uh, approaching the uh, El Toro Y here. If he, maintain, if he maintains the, fi the 5, he stays on the 5, he'll eventually uh, uh, come up on the Irvine spectrum. Um, but he has moved over to the right lane, all the way over to the right. So that tells me... It, I, just only because he was holding so steady for a while in the center lanes, I have to wonder why he's made his way over to that right lane. Maybe contemplating on exiting the freeway. We will see, but certainly slowing down now. He was hovering around 50, now down to 33 miles per hour, according to our real-time speed tracker. And you can see uh, things are slowing down a little bit, whether that's as a result of the, uh, the, the mobility of that front left wheel certainly that's playing a part. What I'd love to know, and we'll eventually try and come around, I think, on the passenger side, I, I'd love to know if that front right tire is still there. It's not. Okay, so I'm being told that front right tire is gone as well. And that actually uh, is going to help him drive in a straight line. With both front tires uh, gone, he's now on uh, on both rims. Mm -hmm. Oh, the right is good. I'm sorry. The right is good. The right. So, so he does. I'm sorry. I, 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 I stand corrected. So the front right actually has not been has not been flattened. The, the tire on the front right, the passenger side, has not been flattened. It's just that front left that's been uh, immobilized there. So you can see no tire there on the front left, driver <laughs> side left. But the rest of the other three wheels do have their tires inflated. That's that's what I'm being told. Okay. Well, it's certainly not stable, that's for sure. And if he try, I would guess if he tries to make a right turn and the weight of the vehicle kind of uh, ends up kind of on, that, on the driver's side front tire, that could be real problems, uh, mean real problems for him. But we'll see. We'll see how this thing holds up. Do, is it, does it look like he's getting off here? At, uh, I, uh, it, well, he's, he's kind of staying in that right lane. you got to wonder... Um, you got to wonder whether they're going to set up for another spike attempt here, especially if he if he uh, if he holds true to that right lane. 
they may have an opportunity to try again, try again for that right wheel and maybe try and take out the rear wheels as well. Certainly something that's going through their mind as he uh, is now on the shoulder. Is that an exit that looks like he's getting off maybe at... Uh, Alton getting Parkway? Off at Enterprise Drive. Okay. All right. Getting off at Enterprise Drive here in Irvine, and for the first time, okay. and uh, the first time during this pursuit, we're now off the freeway. Here's an now. opportunity for a, a pit, pit maneuver if they're so inclined. Keeping in mind that if they think this guy is armed, they may not there want to do the a sparks. Pit maneuver. Oh, there they go. Right. Yeah, he's not really able to. He's going to start losing control here, and that how it now, so often happens, especially in a vehicle of this size, uh, with no front tire there, he's going to start to lose the ability to steer adequately and maintain a safe uh, driving, uh, uh, be, maintain safe driving behavior, if you will. Uh, you can see he's basically worn that front left wheel all the way down to the metal, and that's why we're seeing those, sp those sparks. But more importantly, aside from the risk of a fire uh, eventually, now has both hands out the wheel, almost like I couldn't tell for sure, almost looked like he was giving two thumbs up to the officers behind him, or maybe even to us up here. But he had both hands, no hands on the steering wheel, had both hands out the window there for a second, going slow enough to get away with that, going through this intersection. I can't tell whether he has the green light or if he's blowing through these red lights. In any event, there's hardly any traffic here in this part of Irvine. We're right next to the Irvine Spectrum. He's uh, continuing on uh, Alton Parkway and, uh, again, has slowed down considerably, although I think we're still hovering in the 35, 40, maybe 50. Okay, it looks like still pushing 50 miles per hour, apparently, which is a little bit surprising. But uh, he's definitely lost the ability to controllably turn the vehicle. His steering capabilities are very limited right now, and that ultimately, I think, is going to be how this, you know, what brings this, at least brings the vehicle uh, to a stop. I mean, he, if he decides to bail and, that's a whole other story. Mm -hmm. But uh, at least in terms of the ability of this man to continue driving um, in a controlled manner, he's going to have to either continue in a straight line or slow down so much so that they will have a, a perfect opportunity uh, to pit the vehicle. Okay. And uh, you saw the sparks flying off there intermittently. And again, gesturing out the window, he's certainly, it, it, he's not signaling that I want to give up because the ultimate signal for no. wanting to give up is pulling over and stopping. So right. that's not what he's trying to tell him. Yeah. I'm not sure what he's trying to say, but uh, he is gesturing out the window uh, occasionally. You know, it does make me wonder, is he, is, is he uh, doing something with social media? Because as soon as I mentioned that he's gesturing, he did it again. Um, so let's, oh, something else just uh, yeah, flew more, off. Did they try yeah, to spike strip him again? parts of that wheel falling apart. Yeah, he's going to lose that front wheel. I mean, he's going to be on the axle at a certain point, right. and that, uh, that's how I think this is, you know, I mean, if I was a betting man, that's how I, I think this is going to come to an end or at least bring the vehicle to a stop. But he still is gesturing out the window. And by the way, uh, just a moment ago, you saw when he does that, when he takes his hands off the steering wheel, you can tell he's struggling with that steering wheel a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, when he takes his hands off the steering wheel, the steering wheel, it's not nearly as easy to control that van as it was earlier when he had all four tires. I mean, I guess that goes without saying, but you could definitely see a little bit of a struggle now to maintain the control that he's been exhibiting of this pretty large work van. Again, we also have other passengers inside the vehicle. He's believed to be armed and dangerous, and uh, that is you know, about the extent of what we know. Now, officers may have more information here, but uh, the mental state of this driver, I think, is coming into question um, as we see some of this erratic behavior. You know, for the longest time, it was, you know, not exactly erratic driving. It was pretty stable driving for the most part, to be quite honest. But now, in the last few minutes, we've seen uh, several uh, several uh, signs of uh, of uh, discontent coming from that driver's seat. Mm -hmm. Well, now the CHP is pretty close behind him. Uh, I wonder if Irvine PD is going to get involved now that now that it's off the uh, the, the highway and into the actual city of Irvine whether they might get involved in this, perhaps. Um, so far, it's still CHP. Uh, maybe they're betting that he's going to get back onto the freeway again. But so far, uh, again, sparks flying off there intermittently. I think we have video here from earlier of the sparks that were flying off the vehicle as he uh, got off the freeway there at Alton Parkway. 
made that left turn kind of gingerly and then stayed on Alton Parkway, which is basically what he's doing now in Irvine still. I think we're, we're, we're doing okay on fuel for now. We're good on fuel. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, Mark. I'm back with you. We're just talking to our assignment desk real quick there. Uh, but, yeah, he's, uh, you know, it almost appears that he's picked up a little bit of speed here in the last few seconds. Uh, still doing about 45, 50 miles per hour on Alton Parkway past Jeffries. Uh, actually getting kind of close to John Wayne Airport, although he's a few blocks away. But, yeah, going uh, pretty much north, northwest down uh, through the city of Irvine. I can't confirm yet. I, I'm trying, but I can't confirm yet uh, whether Irvine PD is involved or thinking about getting involved, although they're surely tracking this pursuit at the very least. But CHP uh, is still the lead agency here, and they are showing no signs of giving up on this. And I don't think they will. This is not the kind of driver or situation that they will just, you know, call off the pursuit. Um, you know, for no other reason, there really is not a lot of risk to the public here tonight, except for, you know, the few people who are out. And that's why we are on the air with this pursuit, because you certainly don't want to be on the streets of Irvine, you know, if this is coming your way. But in the meantime, you can see just from our picture how light traffic is for a Thursday night, both on the freeway, aside from some tractor trailers and a few other night owls. Uh, the uh, traffic out here is really, really, really light. You still see uh, that helicopter overhead. That, I believe is Duke One. Yep, Duke One. That's Orange County's helicopter. And uh, so CHP being uh, assisted here by uh, Duke One here as he makes his way through a green light and continuing uh, north on Alton Parkway through the city of Irvine. Yeah, and, you know, if you were going to pick a city in which a pursuit would be uh, uh, optimal at this time of night, Irvine would probably be right at the top of your list because it's going to be very, it's a quiet community during the day most of the time and so especially at night uh, you wouldn't expect to see a lot of traffic there would almost definitely not be any foot traffic out there so um, kind of optimal conditions for the uh, pursuing officers to make decisions that uh, don't involve other factors and by other factors I mean other people or cross traffic or things like that because uh, it's pretty clear out there and uh, that is certainly good news um, it is still, it's amazing to see this van continuing on three wheels and rolling on metal on that uh, driver's side front wheel. Sparks coming off of it occasionally, but uh, not continually. And uh, he's got enough control of it that he can keep it in a straight line. The, the, the trick is going to come when he turns. And I'm guessing in the event he tries to turn, that one vehicle that's close behind him may want to do a, a pit maneuver and try to do it. I think he just ran a red light, too. He so sure did. They're yep. going to add that to the, uh, to the charges that this person is facing. Um, and I'm wondering also, I'm wondering out loud whether, if they think the person is armed, whether they would do the pit or whether they would just wait for him to, uh, to stop. Um, if you've got somebody that, that you, you're pretty sure has a, has a gun, do you want to uh, uh, pit maneuver the car and cause, uh, cause that, or do you just want to wait? I don't know. Yeah, it's a great question. Those uh, decisions kind of vary agency to agency and sometimes up to the discretion of the supervisor. Um, but uh, all of those things will come into play because other than that, other than that, if you're just looking at the uh, the situation here, it's a, it's a great opportunity from, from our vantage point. You know, if he slows down just enough, a great opportunity to, uh, you know, pit him and, and bring this to a, a stop. You know, we've, you know, it's a little bit different if it's a car and, in this case, it's a, a, a large vehicle with numerous people inside, and as you mentioned, at least one handgun believed to be inside the car. So all those things do come into play, and again, an agency-to-agency -agency, uh, decision. I'm not exactly sure whether CHP is going to go ahead with the, uh, a pit authorization. However, you almost think that if they were, they would have done it by now, because they've really, I mean, with this, this little traffic on a, on a four-lane uh, street like this, uh, it's it's almost perfect conditions for mm -hmm. a pit maneuver. You almost think you almost would imagine that we would have uh, seen that already. But you know what? It's never too late, and uh, it's certainly uh, not my call. It's certainly uh, a, a good question, though. I think at the very least. Yeah. Then they're they're looking at the possibility that there are several people involved, and the possibility or probability of a handgun or a gun involved. Um, and so those are all factors that are that are going to come into play here in, in terms of the decision making. Looks like he's going to try to make a left turn here yeah, off of uh, Alton turn. onto Red Hill. 
onto Red Hill Avenue, and you noticed every time he moves that steering wheel, that's when he uh, he loses more metal. That metal is hitting the pavement, and uh, I can't believe he's been able to drive as much as he has on that one rim, but, uh, but he has. Uh, and uh, it, it's only when he steers, when he makes any kind of a turn, that, uh, that we, we see those sparks flying. Um, you saw during the, that last few minutes there, he went through several red lights on Alton Parkway, and that is definitely cause for concern. Now, looks like he's got the green light here, losing a little more. Okay, make, he's, yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's hard braking, and that's also causing uh, some friction as well. So now making a left onto MacArthur Boulevard, and uh, when we start to see these twists and turns like this, you start to wonder whether how familiar he is with this particular part of Orange County. Maybe more familiar with Irvine than we originally thought, or at least any other neighborhood that we've driven through over the last hour or so. Uh, as he makes his way uh, through these streets, uh, it was probably a reason he got off of the freeway to begin with. I mean, he could have taken it all the way to San Diego if he wanted to. That would be the first pursuit that tried to hit hit the border, you know, I mean, it's just anything's possible, but in this case, he decided to get off of the 5 freeway here in Orange County, where it all started, and in a neighborhood that perhaps that he may be familiar with, and so we'll see uh, what happens here. Mm -hmm. Again, another hard break there, and uh, right through the intersection, he goes with CHP right behind him, again, doing speeds right around 40 miles per hour, so perfect pit maneuver conditions, but again, law enforcement taking other factors into consideration. I would imagine the longer this goes, uh, the slower he will eventually go, um, mm -hmm. and we, of course, don't know how much fuel was in that tank to begin with, especially, you know, with the kind of drive. Now, those are pretty large tanks, so, I mean, we might be very far from an end in terms of the fuel, but mm -hmm. uh, it does uh, it does look like this, uh, this van is holding up remarkably well despite the circumstances. Right, and uh, he's not going that fast right now, so that may affect the gas mileage as well. He's only going 55. He's been going as low as, uh, you know, high 30s, low 40s mile, miles an hour, so... You know, it's going to burn a little less fuel at those speeds than it would if he was at freeway speeds. And he's not yeah. stopping, not doing stop and go, so that's a part of it, too. So what we're seeing here, 55 miles an hour on, he's still, is he on Douglas, uh, Douglas Avenue? Uh, yeah, he's on Douglas, uh, or actually, I think he's on MacArthur Boulevard, mm. uh, on MacArthur, past Douglas, and uh, I think they've denied uh the pit maneuver so for now they're holding off on uh on a pit attempt in this particular situation and they're just going to follow him they're just going to continue the pursuit at a safe distance and uh, see what he decides to do here now that could change at the drop of a dime depending on his behavior mm -hmm. um, but for the time being it doesn't look like they're willing to authorize a pit maneuver in this situation are you seeing a change in the lead agency? Are you seeing that CHP is backed uh, backed off and it's now uh, uh, Irvine? Uh, they may have handed it off to a different CHP office, but it is still CHP that is uh, that is in charge here. Still CHP right behind him there. Mm -hmm. I think all of those units, upwards of five or six, uh, all CHP. Irvine uh, <laughs> PD not yet participating in this. Um, but we are actually out of Irvine and now uh, in Newport Beach's jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So uh, Newport Beach will be monitoring as well. But that's typical in a case like this. You know, CHP is really the best equipped in this particular environment, in this situation. Even though they're off of their jurisdiction at some points, they have the ability to bring this to an end, um, regardless of whether it's on the freeway or if it's on surface streets. Uh, um, and whether he decides to get back on the freeway at some point, certainly a possibility as well. But for the time being, CHP is the uh, the best equipped agency, and they have all of the research. Because he's really going from jurisdiction to jurisdiction right. as he travels through Orange County now. So they have, uh, they're have they just the best equipped to uh, do those handoffs as long as he's continuing the trend. Now, if he you know, gets into a surface street well off of the freeway and, uh, you know, falls into a major, you know, uh, department's jurisdiction like Anaheim or something like that, then Anaheim would theoretically take over. But with all these little police departments down here, I would say it's a pretty good bet that CHP will maintain uh, the uh, control of this pursuit.
Yeah, you can't just go trading off agencies as it goes through each uh, jurisdiction either. That that makes sense that you would have one that's that's constant as it goes through these uh, smaller cities. That certainly makes sense. Uh, you're right there, Chris. Uh, MacArthur Boulevard now uh, passing University Drive in Irvine. Again, this is a white van. This is a pursuit that initiated, oh gosh, about more than an hour ago now uh, in, uh, I believe, it was, was it Anaheim or was it Brea PD that, that initially involved uh, in this pursuit? I believe it was Santa Ana. Santa Ana, excuse me, right. So, And it's a stolen van. Uh, that's the report we have. The van is stolen. There may be more than one person inside, and that the belief is that that person, at least one person in this van, has a gun, has a weapon. And uh, there has been one spike strip application. It has resulted in the loss of the left front tire, the driver's side front tire, uh, about 15 minutes ago. And since then, the driver has been slowing down but not he's not out and he's gone through some red lights sparks have flown occasionally from that that uh, badly damaged or gone front uh, front wheel um, but slowing down continuing. to about 20 miles an hour now dr dramatically slowing down and also getting closer to the beach as we make our way south on MacArthur Boulevard now coming to a complete stop and just based on that stop I've got to wonder if he's run out of steam mm. uh, literally or figuratively if the gas uh, has uh, run out on this guy. I, I, I can't, I mean, unless he just all of a sudden had a change of heart. Uh, this van has now come to a full and complete stop. They're going to give him a little time and start giving him instructions if he's willing to comply here. Mm -hmm. That'll obviously be the best situation for all parties involved. But they're going to treat this very, very gingerly. You can see the number of officers, CHP officers, right behind him. They're ready to continue the pursuit if he steps on the gas. But for right now, he's come to a complete stop. We see his hands. I don't see his hands out the window like he's ready to give up, but I do see his hands. He's still gesturing out the window, and the driver's side door is still closed, which tells me that uh, he is not exactly complying with what they're telling him to do. They are giving him instructions on a PA system, probably telling him to shut the vehicle off. The vehicle is still on, and the driver's side door is still closed. All the doors are still closed. Nobody has come out yet. Just that hand out the way. Passenger door Passenger now door open. popping open. So we might see signs of a surrender here if uh, if everybody comes out peacefully, uh, at least the passengers. And, of course, you know, when we say passengers, we don't always know whether they are willing participants or whether they are hostages. Those are just questions or, you know, facts that we don't have. And you can see it looks like a female a female passenger that stepped out of the vehicle. She is certainly complying with her hands <coughs> up in the air, stepping backwards uh, in the direction of CHP. She is anxious to, uh, to, to she certainly appears to be uh, uh, very willing to give herself up peacefully here. So you got to wonder, you got to wonder who those folks are in the vehicle with this driver and what the relationship is. Obviously, we don't know those uh, facts yet, but a story yet to be told. You can see uh, one passenger has now given up. The driver still in the driver's seat. Unclear whether there is a third, fourth, or fifth passenger. They will have to meticulously. Uh, another water bottle? Yeah, more water bottles. Some more water bottles. Yeah. Don't know if there was water in the bottles. Yeah. That's anybody's <laughs> guess. You can see Clear he's liquid. now giving himself up. And uh, I got to tell you, this does not exactly match the description that we were originally hearing for these two. Um, but sure enough, looks like almost an elderly male. Almost looks like a, almost looks like an elderly male, maybe, uh, stepping backwards and now complying. So the driver is now out of the driver's seat, um, and uh, and this gentleman, or I should not say gentleman, but this uh, suspect is uh, is limp limping. I think would be the, the, the best way to describe it, mm -hmm. limping in the direction of police officers, of the CHP here. So CHP now ready to take the driver into custody after the passenger has stepped out and <coughs> given herself up. A male driver, a female passenger, yet to be told whether there's anybody else inside that van, but the pursuit has come to an end. An hour and a half long pursuit that started in Orange County, made its way all the way up to the Inland Empire, up into the Riverside area, through Ontario, back onto the freeway, uh, mostly freeway driving that we've seen through most of this. Ultimately, that 
hit, that uh, spike strip rather, uh, was very useful, uh, excellently executed, and uh, really disabled that van. There you see this driver giving himself up. They're taking him into custody with his hands now behind his back. He, uh, uh, man, it's going to be very interesting to see what the story is here. You know, all of these pursuits, all of these people who decide to run from authorities have their own reasons and their own uh, issues. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's always interesting to see how these end. This one, fortunately, uh, I would say the best case scenario, running mm -hmm. out of gas or at least coming to a peaceful stop and the driver thinking better of it and giving himself up as we uh, now begin to uh, fly away from the scene. This pursuit coming to an end, Air 7 now uh, running low on fuel, so we're going to make our way over to John Wayne Airport and get some fuel as they approach the vehicle and eventually clear it. Okay. Well, uh, Chris Christie, thank you very much for your coverage from Air 7 HD. It does appear to be over. There is one step left. They're going to have to clear that van, make sure everybody's out of it, and they're going to be very cautiously approach it because, again, the initial report was that there was that a, a weapon person? in there, and they're going to make sure that there isn't. Uh, I'm not sure what that is on the ground next to the van that was dropped by the passenger. Like a bag. It appears to be a bag. Okay, some sort of a bag. So they're going to have to examine all of that. The investigation will continue. Air 7 having to get gas at John Wayne Airport. The good news, nobody's been hurt. Uh, no accidents that have been involved in this. The driver and the passenger both in custody. And our coverage at this point will end. We thank you very much for watching us here on uh, ABC7 and again on Facebook. Have a good night, and we'll see you tomorrow. Good night.